when we talked about the properties of matrix addition, I likened that to the properties of addition of real numbers. So for example, I said that the real number A plus the real number B was still a real number. Not only that, but we knew that A plus B, those two real numbers could be added in any order. We could add B plus A and we'd get the same result. As it happens, that's also true with matrices. A plus B is the same as B plus A. And uh, the matrix A plus the matrix B is in the set of all matrices that are M by N and composed of real numbers. You don't need to worry about this notation. I just, I'm trying to make the correlation between the example in the real numbers and the example in the matrices. In the real numbers, we have that when you take a real number and another real number and add them together, the result is an element of, or a member of the set of real numbers. In other words, when you add the two real numbers together, you get another real number. In the case of matrices, if you take a matrix and another matrix and you add them together, they belong, that, that new result belongs to the set of matrices. And that's what this notation means, but it's not part of your textbook and I'm not, I don't expect you to, to memorize it or to know it. It's just that I wanted you to know that um, the, the, the sum of two matrices is also a matrix. That's the point I'm trying to make here. So I'm trying to draw the, the correlation between what happens when you add two real numbers and when you add two matrices. When you add two real numbers, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. When you add two matrices, it doesn't matter what order you do it in. In the real numbers, we have a number. Uh, let's, let's take uh, a, a real number A, and we're gonna multiply it by something so that the result is still the number A. In the real numbers, that number is one. And we call that number the multiplicative identity. We have a similar matrix in the world of matrices. If I take a matrix A and I multiply it by another matrix and I end up with the same matrix I started with, that matrix is the identity matrix. It is the multiplicative identity in the world of matrices. You may or may not remember from an earlier section that an, uh, an identity matrix, I, will always be a square matrix because by definition, an identity matrix is one that has ones on its diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This identity matrix has zeros everywhere except down the diagonal. If we had another row, but not another column, we would have a, a row that didn't, that didn't meet that criteria. If we had another column, but not another row, we'd have a, uh, an identity, a, a matrix that didn't meet the criteria of having one stand down the diagonal and zeros everywhere else. This particular identity matrix, because it's a five by five matrix, and because it's square, we don't need to say five by five. I mean, we'll say five by five, but we don't need to write it. Um, we'll often notate, uh, annotate the identity matrix, the specific, specific identity matrix with a subscript five. So in general, we're gonna say that the identity matrix is I sub N. Oops, I sub N. Okay, and that when you multiply a matrix by an identity matrix, you end up with the same matrix as you started with. Okay, here is a matrix A, and notice that it's a three by two matrix, and here's the identity matrix two, two by two identity matrix, and it is a two by two matrix, so this three by two and this two by two can be multiplied together. And when we do that, we get, let's see, I'm gonna squeeze myself into this corner here. 
we get 2, negative 1, 0, 3, 9, 4 times 1, 0, 0, 1, which gives us this is a 3 by 2, and this is a 2 by 2. So we're going to get a 3 by 2 matrix as a result. A 3 by 2. And I'll do that multiplication now. So we have, I'm going to start with row 1, column 1. I have 2 times 1 plus negative 1 times 0. That's 2. Then I have, uh, then I'll do row 1 with column 2. That's 2 times 0 plus negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1. That was row 1, column 2. So row, row 1, column 2 is negative 1, <clears throat> and so on. Um, starting with row two, I get zero times one plus three, three times zero times one plus three times zero, which is one. Nope, sorry, that's zero. And then zero times zero plus three times one is three. My third row is nine times one, which is nine plus four times zero, that's nine. And 9 times 0 plus 4 times 1 is 4. So, and, and this is my result, right? This is the matrix that I get when I multiply these two matrices together. But because the second matrix is the identity matrix, the result is just the matrix I started with. It's the same matrix. Now, it... I'd like to show you what happens if I multiply. This was this this multiplication was the matrix A times the matrix I sub two, and I'd like to show you what happens if I multiply I sub two on the left with matrix A, but I can't because matrix I sub two is a two by two matrix, and matrix A is a three by two matrix. And these numbers don't match. So I can't do that multiplication. What I can do is I can change this two to a three and do matrix multiplication by sub three times A. Of course, I don't have room to do that on this screen. So I'll, I'll, I'll move to another slide to do that. But I'll use the same matrix A that we have here and I'll multiply it by the identity matrix. But the identity matrix will be, first of all, it'll be a, I sub 3. And second of all, this time I'm going to do it on the left. All right, so now we're going to multiply I sub 3 by A. And I'll do that row column rule that we learned in the previous video. Um, I'm just going to dive in here. I have one times 2 plus 0 times everything else. So I have 2. I worked on row 1 and column 1 in this to get this entry, to get this entry here. So it goes in the row 1, column 1 position. 1 times 2 plus 0 times everything else. In the next column, right? I've done row 1, column 1 now. I need to do row 1, column 2. Here I'm going to have 1 times negative 1 plus 0 times everything else. So I have negative 1, row 1, column 2. I sh probably should have pointed out that this is going to be a 3 by 2 matrix when I'm finished. Three rows in the first column times two columns, sorry, three rows in the first matrix. I keep doing that. Three rows in the first matrix, one, two, three, by two columns in the second matrix. So my resulting matrix is going to be a three 
by two as well. All right, so now I'll go to row two. I have zero times two plus one times zero plus zero times nine. There's a zero in each one of those products. So the result is gonna be zero. And then row two, column two, I have zero times negative one, one times three, and zero times four. The one times three is the only thing that produces a, a non-zero result. So when I add the other zeros, I get just three. Oh, and I'm ready to do row three. So zero times everything except the last entry, zero times two, zero times zero, and then one times nine. So I get, I get a nine there. And zero times everything except the last entry, zero times one, zero times three, and then one times four, so I get a four there. And I've made my space too big now, so I'm gonna erase this bracket and put move it over a little bit just to tidy things up. And what I have here is matrix A again. I got this same matrix back. So the, the point of this particular piece is that you can take any matrix and multiply it by the appropriate identity matrix. And you can do that from either side. I'm gonna call one of these M because as we've just seen, sometimes this, the identity matrix that you're working with has to be, um, has to be a different size in one direction than it is in the other. Those two are gonna be equal and what they're gonna equal is the original matrix A. So that's the, the primary point of, of this piece. 